So as Melissa Anderson Trust uh, was here earlier saying, this is our Christmas program, our annual Christmas program that we put on every year. Although we always like to change it up so it's not the same thing over and over again. And boy, did we change things up. <laughs> so uh, the original concept was uh, we sat with the kids and asked them, what about the Christmas story is compelling to you? And it turns out that the kids talked about the guiding star. They talked about the mule that carried Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. They talked about the innkeeper. They talked about the angel. And it was fascinating to us because these were not the central characters, Joseph and Mary and Jesus. It was all about the supporting cast. And so we ran with that concept and thought, okay, let's make something with the supporting cast, but put maybe a little of a modern twist on it. And so we set it in present day, and the idea being that now the, the donkey is now an Uber or Lyft driver, that the innkeeper is a hotel manager, uh, that uh, the angel communicates through more modern methods, and so with that in mind, uh, and also the updating of the gifts being a little more modern, some more practical than others. Um, <laughs> and because when was the last, char last time any of you received a jar of myrrh? <laughs> I assume that's coming in jars. I don't know. Maybe like a toothpaste tube. I don't know. So uh, we've supplemented them with video vignettes. And we have set this in a modern time with the, hotel, with the hotels, all the hotels in the area being booked because there is a Comic-Con happening in town. <laughs> so with that in mind, we present to you the modern untold story of the supporting cast of the birth of Christ. I had a doozy of a fail the other night. I picked up a couple in Nazareth, a man and his very pregnant wife, and they asked to go to Bethlehem, about a hundred miles away. I thought that they could just take a greyhound over there, but the bus isn't really great for a very pregnant woman's back. The back seat of my Mazda probably isn't as comfy as one of those pillowy soft Cadillacs of yesteryear, but it sure beats the bus. Besides, that's what I do. A passenger tells me where to go and I haul them in any cargo they have to the destination. The ride was fairly quiet. They didn't seem too talkative, which is fine by me. I've heated hard to passengers before in conversation, and sometimes that can annoy people, I suppose. They were pretty worried about getting to Bethlehem, as they seemed to be on some kind of time constraint. Once we arrived in Bethlehem, they were trying to check into hotels, but every last one of them were full. Kind of weird that they didn't bother to book something ahead of time, but this trip also seemed really hastily less. It took us a while, but after driving all over, we did find a hotel on the edge of town. Although, as I understand it, the room they were given wasn't entirely conventional. This is the fifth hotel that we've been to book solid. No offense, but could you have tried to book a hotel before this trip? Well, this pregnancy wasn't exactly planned, but when God chooses you to give birth to the savior of humanity, well, you don't really have much of a choice. Uh, right. Well, I'll take your you need because you're okay. Mm. Oh. Great, this place is book solid too. What? I know. Uh. Well, the good news, if, if anything, that there's one last hotel that this Guiding Star app says that we can try out. Um, I got the address right here I can send to you. Um, hope we can make it there soon because it's starting to get dark. Okay, please go. <sighs> Things were so different a couple or a few millennia ago. You would appear before someone chosen by God, pass along a message to them to do a thing like build an ark or lead his chosen people out of Egypt, and they do it. But those were the days when you could be the, with the only person for miles around, and God isn't one to be like that person on the bus or the checkout line at the grocery store talking to the person next to them or worse, on their phone unintentionally but obnoxiously loud. 
God prefers us to pass along our message with more subtlety and a lighter, more personalized touch. But now, thanks to Skype and FaceTime, my job is a whole lot easier. No need to pack or travel, just a few taps on my phone and I, and I was able to get word out to Mary that she was going to be the mother of the savior of humanity. Following up with that, I passed along the message to a group of men who would be visiting the area where, when the savior was to be born. The gifts that they will bring will be the most helpful to the parents of this new child. What's this angel that keeps popping up? I guess I should answer. That's not be good. Ah, my eyes! <laughs> Do not be afraid. It's no worse than a camera flash. Your eyes will be fine. Who are you? What do you want? I am an angel, a messenger of God. You and your colleagues are to visit a child who has been born in Bethlehem. He is the Son of God and the Savior of humanity. There is an app on your phone that I've installed for you. It's called Guiding Star and it's to provide you navigation to Bethlehem and the child. You installed an app without my permission? Can I at least read the terms and conditions first? Whoa, you actually read through all that boring legal stuff? Weirdo. My colleagues and I were celebrating closing a deal with a supplier to build a new solar power plant when our phones started beeping and buzzing. It was someone trying to FaceTime us, and we kept ignoring it since we didn't recognize the name. Eventually, we blocked it. But then the name Angel kept popping up, and it was happening to all of us at once. We were kind of freaked out, so just to see what would happen, I answered it, and this bright light and voice came from all of our phones. The voice said, do not be afraid. This FaceTime conversation will not count against your data limit. <laughs> also, as the messenger of God, I should probably tell you that he would like you to make haste to a hotel outside of the city of Bethlehem. There you will find a newborn child who will be the king of the Jews. Bring gifts for this child. So my colleagues and I journeyed westward in search of this child and brought gifts that will aid them. Well, it took us some time to decide what to get the savior child, but my colleagues and I have figured out we've put together the perfect package. A hydro flask for the long journey of head. <coughs> it can store baby formula, hot cocoa, water, <laughs> Maybe, if he's this big deal that the angel says, he can turn the water into wine, like as a party trick or something. Wouldn't that be cool? Next. The latest iPhone. He's going to need to have to spread his message somehow. And what better way to do it than vlogging on YouTube? Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And lastly, a Lamborghini. Flashy? Sure. Expensive? Yeah. When you got places to be, this is the way to travel. I thought that my Shaun the Sheep costume would be at least recognizable by some at this at Comic-Con this year. Turns out it was a little too unclear for most people who were there. I mean, it's not a Hogwarts robe or Superman spandex and cape. Anyway, I was on my way over to this hotel out outside of the city because one of my friends were, was staying there. And there was supposed to be this awesome after party happening late at night. As I was wandering through the hotel trying to find the party, I found myself in the back of the hotel where I guess the janitor's closet, boiler room, and all that stuff was out. That's when I heard a commotion and went to investigate. That's when I came into the laundry room and found a woman who looks like she had just given birth right there amongst the towels and sheets. Both of these parents looked overwhelmed, so I gathered some towels and sheets and offered them to the couple. Because if you can't trust a sheep with picking out quality cotton towels, who can you trust? <laughs> I stayed a while with this couple who 
were clearly <laughs> exasperated with an unusual quiet child swaddled in what I really hope were clean towels. <laughs> Whoa! Here's some towel. Thank you. Hey, do you want me to call an ambulance or something? You really ought to go to the hospital. No, I think we're gonna be okay. We don't have much money. And besides, the hospitals here are outside of our insurance network. What about a room? Why are you in the laundry room of a hotel? And we traveled all the way from Nazareth and every hotel we tried getting a room and they were booked full. This was the only place that would take us in and the best they could do was this laundry room. So you're traveling here from Bethlehem can't go to a hospital, and you're forced to sleep in a laundry room. Wow, that's bad. As the guiding star, I have been the light for sailors and wanderers finding their way to distant lands or back home. I've been the center of attention of travelers and astronomers for so very, very long, but tonight, I was called upon to be a little less subtle than usual. You see, there is a young couple and a group of men who needed guidance to a hotel just outside of the city. But this hotel was so new that it didn't appear on any other GPS apps. One of God's angels had a great idea, though. She would put an app on their phone that would guide the young couple to their destination while I would cast a light down onto the hotel. With the holy light shining down upon where God wanted them to be, he thought it would be a little something special to know that they really did come to the right place. It is kind of a bummer that I don't get as much attention as I used to. First, it was printed road maps, then dedicated GPS devices and Google Maps. Not that I can blame progress, though. I mean, is anyone down there complaining about not using Morse code anymore? When was the last time you got a telegram? I mean, it's not as if I expect someone going on a road trip to break out a sextant to guide them to the on-ramp of the freeway. But God asked me to help guide some very important people on a very important journey they were on. You don't say no to the big guy, and I was more than happy to fulfill his request. It felt good to be looked upon again and to play a part in the story that God has unfolding for us. It was shortly after I started my shift at ho the hotel that they arrived. A young man and young, very pregnant woman approached the front desk and asked if there were any rooms available. They were clearly worn out and exhausted from the long trip that they were on. I had to break the bad news to them that because of the convention in town that all of our rooms were booked. They were nearly pleading and begging for anything that we could put them in, even if it were the janitor's closet. Seeing it as we are a small hotel on the outskirts of the city and no other nearby places for them to stay, I made arrangements for them to stay in the laundry room, but just for the night. That lady sure looked like she could pop and give birth at any moment. I don't know how anyone could be desperate enough to want to sell to stay in a hotel laundry room. Ugh, hopefully my manager doesn't find out though. I'm pretty sure it's against policy and all, but they seem really nice and it would have been a shame if I had to make them sleep in their car or worse. They left this morning with some guy dressed as a sheep. I tell you, these Comic Cons get weird every year. I better get back to work now. I need to clean up the mess they left in the laundry room before the laundry staff get here and throw a fit. 
It's sometimes not single grand acts that make the biggest of differences or tell the most important stories. It is the small things that gradually and collectively add up to support those stories. Small pebbles that one by one tumble down a mountain can let loose the big boulder that they were holding back. We each have or have had our part to play in the telling of one of our most cherished stories from the Bible. Whether it's relying a message, leaving gifts, an act of guidance, or simply being present, those people and creatures were witnesses to the single individual who would preach God's love, justice, and faith in the go goodness of his children. Even today, our small acts with one another in this space, in our classrooms, homes, and communities, give nudges and changes that give birth to our future. May our supporting acts lift up ourselves and each other and give hope and love to our world as Christ asks us for to do.